Good day everybody and welcome to another PHP Runner, ASPRunner.net and ASP Runner Pro tutorial. Today we will continue our journey on our own REST application. We will apply an API key that users must use to, to authenticate as well as adding parameters to the stored procedure. REST API is available in version 10.4 or later and can be downloaded from xlinesoft.com. Ok, here I am at phpMyAdmin and will demonstrate how I create a stored procedure using a SQL window. With the correct database selected, open the SQL query window. The first thing I do is to change the delimiter into something else. In this case, two forward slashes. Type create procedure and I name it employee list title. You can call it anything but I just choose to have title in the description as a reminder that this procedure will be able to reduce the data or search on job title. Open and close brackets. Here we will declare a parameter in a moment. Type begin and a few lines down, type end. And end the statement with the delimiter declared earlier on. I now set the delimiter back to what it was before I changed it, a semicolon. Back here between the brackets, I will declare a parameter, type in, to indicate that the value will go into the procedure. I give it a name and call it title. And declare a type, which I will make varchar50. Between the begin and end, I declare a SQL query and specifically say where the job title is equal to title which is the parameter name I stated earlier on. The parameter name does not matter at all. You don't even have to remember what you called it, as long as it is the same here in both places. I'm now going to call the procedure directly after I created it, with a parameter to test the output. Now, if I run this code for the first time, I will create a procedure and call it all in one go. But you will get an error if you try to run this for a second time as the procedure already exists. To solve this, I will delete the procedure only if it exists before doing anything else. I find this approach a little easier as it allows you to observe the output and to make changes to the query in case you need to do so. In other words, you can run this over and over without receiving errors about the existence of the procedure. The drop function will warn about the deletion of the procedure, but this is not a problem at all. I'm now happy with how the stored procedure is working and open up the project I created in part 1. Exactly as we did in part 1, click on Create SQL View, give the view a name, and I call it elist underscore title. Click OK. At the elist title SQL query window, I'm going to call the employee underscore list underscore title procedure. Since the parameter is defined as varchar50, I have to enclose it in single quotes. Click on insert variable and select all fields search. I now cut the string representing the all field search and put it in the correct place, which will be between the two single quotes. Click on run SQL a pop-up will appear asking for a variable value to pass through to the stored procedure. I type sales representative as I know this value does exist in the data and click OK. I now add all the fields. I click next to remove all unwanted pages and set the key column. Proceed to the Choose a Field page 
and I remove import functionality. It is now time to set the API key for each user. At the miscellaneous page, click on REST API. You will note that the API key option is not available at this moment and that is purely because there is no user table defined yet. At the security page, select a database, indicating that I want to use a database table as an authentication method. I select the table, in this case uh, users, which I already created in phpMyAdmin. I now set the username field, the password field, and the full name field. One required field to have in the user table is an API key field. This will store each user's unique API key. In my case, I made it varchar250. Now going back to the REST API option on the miscellaneous page, select API key under authorization and choose the field from the user table. Click OK. Now you can populate the API key field in the user table in any way you like. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to set up a user registration form. I select the tick box and choose the fields. Note that I do not select the API key field as I plan to populate it during a registration. On the before a registration page event, I need to generate a unique string for the user. You are free to approach this in any way you like, but I'm going to use the password hash function together with a combination of the record ID and the username. This should generate a unique string every time. I now set the field with the value and because this is the before registration event, it will be saved into the database by PHP Runner. I'm also going to store the value into a session so I can display it to the user wherever I want. Let's copy the session and go back to the page designer. Under Common Pages, I select the notification page that indicates that the registration was successful and make a few layout changes. Insert a code snippet and echo the API key to the user. I want to do the same on the e-list page we created in part 1 as the API URL is going to change since we added an API key. Let's create some space. Insert some text. and then another code snippet that will echo the entire URL, including the user's API key. We only set this session during the registration process and will not be set after a user is signed on. So I go to the After Successful Login page and set the session. Let's build the project and see what we have so far. First, let's see how registration works. Username is Anne, password is A1234. I confirm the password and the name is Anne. Exactly as we expected, an API key is generated and displayed to the user. He or she can now copy the key to use later on. Click on Proceed to the login page. First, let's have a look at the e-list title. 
as you can see, there are no results as we have not searched for anything yet. I'm going to perform a few searches to demonstrate how the value goes into the stored procedure and outputs the results. Now let's look at the e-list we created in part 1 of OwnRest. This time we constructed an URL with the signed on users API key embedded. The only thing we added was the API parameter. And each user must use their own unique key. If I now copy this entire URL and paste it into my browser, the JSON output will be visible just like before. The only difference now is you need an API key to get the results. Ok, that's it for this tutorial. Please ask your questions in the comments below. REST API and own REST API is still very new to all of us and it's your questions and comments that will eventually help us all to understand it better at the end of the day. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time.